Welcome back, and we're still in Suzukiville. Yes, I know. Should be getting on with the Honda. No, Yamaha. Yamaha. I need to finish the Yamaha. Anyway. We have more exciting goodies. We have two pairs of handlebar levers, etc., as per Yamaha, actually. Uh, for the Honda and the Suzuki, we have a dinky, very dinky, lovely, hopefully workable uh, little brake reservoir. Isn't that cute? Sweet. Yeah. And uh, most exciting of all, oh, we have paint. Yes, it is uh, it's supposed to be metallic. Doesn't look very metallic on the lid, but there we go. That kind of cyber grey, that Kia titanium colour that we've um, cheated with. And what have we got in here? Wow. Yes, we have the very nice air filters. Let's see if they fit. Aren't they cool? Lovely. Yes, remember these 45 degree jobs I bought for the Yamaha as an experiment. Well, they had that extra, extra piece of foam. That boy there. So, I'm going to uh, chop a piece of that out because I think it will fit in there. Well, they fit beautifully and they look uh, very cool indeed. Um, I like the idea of that extra little bit of foam rubber though, so I'm going to experiment with that. But yeah, very nice. Um, a bit cheap and cheerful actually, seeing as they were so expensive, but they're very lightweight, so we like lightweight. Cool. There you go, job done. Anyway, I'm not going to put them on right now. Um, nice though they are, because I'm still messing around with electrics and stuff, and it's easier if they're out of the way. So the idea is that that replaces that. Yeah, and if it works, and it looks like it should, um, then uh, we may swap out the one on the handlebars, which uh, is disappeared at the moment, but that would be cute up there. And uh, we may even do the same over here for the ammo. May. Although, I've already had that one off twice, so I think I'll stick with that one. We like the sign. Not bad for 10 bucks, eh? Well, it looked all right last time, but um, yeah, it definitely needs to be bigger because uh, this boy can't mount any lower than that. So, uh, hmm, okay. Cut number two. Uh, not so sure about it now because it kind of takes up a lot of real estate. I'm not sure about that. Don't think I like it. That worked on the other side yeah nothing in the way there apart from the chain but as long as we keep clear of that which we are we're good lovely let's go in there then how cute is that that works as long as it plugs into that rather large tube i'm hoping it will let's find out that's all that semi bolted down and um, likewise under here uh, bolted down ready to go rooted up over there might need to shift that and um, still looking neat and tidy in here so that's good need to work out whether I'm gonna lock that off or not or just leave it and tuck it up I think I'll tuck it up done that just leaves this and all the attached cobblers uh, to organize, but we can do that. We know where that's going now. Still have no idea about this. Then all we have to do is work out where the battery's gonna go. Lovely. So much for universal brake fittings. It's like a dick in a bucket. I retract my previous statement about uh, brake fittings being universal. So that's a bummer. All right, having double checked the grips, I'm going to cut the. Uh, I'm going to cut the. Am I going to cut the Susie bars or my old Triumph bars? I don't know. Do we want chrome? I don't think we want chrome, and they're all going to be covered up anyway, so it don't really matter. Let's use the old Susie bars. Job done. Compliments of Mr. Kawasaki, and uh, we still have a pair of children's cycle handlebars available at the next garage sale. Of course, I'll be needing Mr. Kawasaki again uh, if I'm going to be grinding these original mounts down because I can't think of anything else I'm going to be using them for. 
But I'm in no hurry to do that because um, you never know what you might want to mount where. So um, yeah, I'm going to leave them for the time being. Next stage on that is to actually take that top yoke off and get the clip-ons on. Then we can uh, put those uh, lovely cut bars into the uh, lovely clip-ons and uh, yeah get everything sorted anyway meantime i've been busy outside spraying with my new um titanium paint and uh, apart from the obligatory statutory wolf hair that's come out quite nicely i'm going to leave it like that for now um because i don't know what i'm going to do about the backlight and mounting it and what that involves and um yeah but looking good and just when i thought this was ready to go i turned it round and yeah divots and another one actually and uh blemish and more divots and uh more divots it's almost like me playing golf not bad for first coat um well a couple of coats of primer um drop some fang ash on it need to sand that off <laughs> otherwise pretty good uh it'll need closer inspection uh, yeah, that still needs some work, doesn't it? Mm. Okay, well, the primer showed that up. It starts getting difficult when there's a bunch of different colours, blacks, whites, reds. Um, yeah, that still needs quite a bit of work. Okay. So, both these operations are going to be a little bit um, tricky because obviously you can't just clamp that up in the vise. Same yeah. with that, really can't really... Well, maybe I can put it in the vise. Yeah, maybe that bottom edge. Next up for Mr. Kawasaki is, uh, yes, the air filter. We are going to uh, try and convert this to a backlight. Uh, so it's gently clamped in the vise because, um, yeah, structurally it's quite solid, but it's all just um, very flimsy bits of metal. Anyway, we're going to cut it down the middle here, and then we're going to see what we're going to do the other end. Okay. Well, I would say that was relatively successful uh, in terms of uh, neatly cutting that in half to provide two possible um, lights. Yeah, um, only one minor disaster. And minor it was. Sorry about that, I hope you're not squeamish. Reminds me of a particularly weird math teacher I had. Anyway, two people will get that reference. Well, would you add them and eat it? Um, I do, because it kind of just looked like it might. So this is one of those Perspex blocks I have a lot of. And uh, it fits perfectly, absolutely perfectly. Um, so what I'm thinking, cut it in half, uh, one top, one bottom, um, whatever, because maybe some of this is going to be hidden. Certainly in the Suzuki, I think we're only going to have like a bottom area showing under that uh, cowling the rear cowling of the seat so uh, the beauty of it is that we can uh, we can make two out of one and maybe we just sandwich it a uh, little gap and that'll just be doubly cool wow i'm really excited about this uh, i get excited about silly little things like this uh, but it's cool right because it's just a nice piece of uh construction engineering um, and shame for it to go to waste uh, not probably a very good air filter but it will make a very cool back line. and while we're on the Suzuki uh, and I had the uh, Kawasaki out I um, chopped the bars I did and uh, finished them off nicely at the end so they're all kind of ready for the clip-ons and if you remember the indicators at the end of the tube uh, which will go in there or maybe I'll drill a hole I don't know uh, I obviously want to hide the wires as much as possible you know me uh, but there we go ready to go so the next thing to explore is how the hell we're gonna mount it inside there uh, which is gonna be tricky and uh, by the way this is painted now well yeah I mean obviously dog hair um, kind not sure about that color uh, it's just kind of silver to me. I don't know. I'm going to leave it for the time being. Uh, obviously it needs 
some sanding and finishing uh, a final coat at least so if it's a different color that's fine but yeah I don't uh, I don't know it's difficult for you guys to tell as well because it's under direct kind of artificial light but it's just kind of silver to me not just wanted it maybe a couple of shades a little darker. Anyway, let's look at how we're going to mount this damn thing. So to achieve that, uh, which would be that half a perspex block in there, um, you can kind of see, hope, hopefully you can see, uh, it's kind of in line with the bottom edge of the seat. And the best place to mount it obviously is, is here, which has got loads of bloody holes in it already um we haven't even worked out how we're going to mount the seat and the battery is just there to hold it upright by the way uh but obviously uh, that's clearly different from that plane yeah so we're going to need something and it's a long bloody way away it's going to be bouncing around like nobody's business isn't it yeah, especially with those air shocks. So, mm, difficult. Something to ponder. But I'm thinking either one or two weird kind of Z, Z brackets that come off that horrible checker plate, which I'm leaving there just for prosperity. Because both, uh, even though this is off the Honda, it's going on the Suzuki and the Suzuki had a horrible checker plate too so I think I should leave some horrible checker plate on there <coughs> it would be rude not to in uh, memory of Jolene number one I'm thinking something like this uh, you know that kind of thing uh, but obviously not this thing because this is a very specialized tool for taking off door handles on a um, on a 61 Bel Air yeah compliments from my mate Kurt he just happened to have one. That would work if it was longer. Well, it could be longer, but it kind of needs that much per chase. And it's an anti-tip bracket. Mm. Anyway, that's why you keep all this old shit, because sooner or later it comes in handy. Except not this time around. Okay. Well, whilst I quite like the offset, <laughs> it's a little bit different. Um, just to show you that the lights will mount as low as possible on the force. Yes. Talking of which, we need to get this top yoke off and those clip-ons on. So, let's get this yoke off. Um, these are already loose on either side. So, I'm assuming it's just this boy here. And then it'll lift off. And I was thinking about these and whether I grind them down or not. And, you know... I'm going to repaint it, obviously, but um, I'm thinking I'm going to need somewhere with the clip-ons and everything to mount the new brake reservoir, and I can't see anywhere else at the moment, although I'll see if I pull it off that somewhere, I guess, but I'm going to leave them there. As usual, took a little gentle persuasion with a rubber mallet, but we are off and uh, ready to put clip-ons on. I didn't have the right size socket or the deep well version of it and uh, had to use that, but it all worked out all right in the end. Let's get these boys on. Well, I know it's a little bit low, but it's because it slipped on beautifully. I um, pre-loosened it and there you go. Slides on wonderfully. Okay. Cool, so we just need to make sure, yes, that's pointing down rather than up, because that would look really stupid. So we've got them on the right side. Good, good. Let's put the yoke Because you know that's going to be easy, right? I mean, it was tricky getting it off, so it's going to be worse putting it back on. So, of course, this is going to be tricky, because you've got to line it all up, but... Um, oh, sorry about that. Um, oh, I just greased up the insides of those a little to aid the situation. Yeah, so it took me a while to uh, work out because uh, I wanted to raise these out of the yoke and I forgot to uh, loosen them at the bottom yoke. Yeah, duh. 
Uh, and of course, when I did, the whole thing collapsed and fell over. Actually, big accident. Uh, wife came running. I'm fine. And um, yeah, so now we've got it precariously balanced on a jack, so I can bash them down again so the front wheels off the ground a little, and uh, I can decide what I want up here. What looks sensible. That's starting to look sensible. Um, and also dropping the front end. I know I could cut the forks and do all that stuff, but what the hell? Okay, both sides set at 38 millimeter, which apparently is a very popular size in the US. Don't know what that's all about, but. This thing has to go. I just spiked myself in the knee. Bloody stupid kicks then. Yeah. Anyway, having done all that, um, this opens up a whole new world of uh, opportunity because uh, I could have put the clip-ons up top, which might be better. I'll probably need to put the tank on and see what it looks like. Um, clearly down here, um, yeah, now we've got interference problems, so <laughs> they're going to be like that. And I shouldn't have probably got the risers after all. Yeah, because you can just get some that comes straight out. Ah. Um, but the risers will be good if they're on top, right? So put that up there. Uh, so there's that option. So I'm, what I'm going to do is put the tank on and work it out from there. Talking of which, I did a little bit more filler and uh, there's still a little to go, I have to say. So uh, I might not use that really fine stuff. I might just wodge some uh, proper bondo on there and then sand it down because this is getting tedious. And tedious for me, let alone you guys. Well, it's not bad, but at the same time, and actually I've kind of sat on it and, and it, it's not bad, but at the same time, there's no point in having a riser um, when it's not rising, right? Um, so, yeah, what an idiot. All right. Uh, I should have thought this through, obviously, before everything else. Uh, <laughs> anyway, I've clamped it down here, and I've clamped it down there, so I need to release the top again. The bottom will stay solid and everything. <sighs> I've got to take the yoke off again and then put them on top which would have been easier in the first place, right? And just slip them on the top. Lovely jubbly, job done. Yeah. Classic case of not thinking the whole process through. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. And uh, look, perfect, yeah? 38 millimeters, perfect. No wonder the Americans like it so much. Um, there we go. They fit beautifully and look, uh, they just, yeah, I mean, everything just bloody works. Should have done that in the first place, right? Duh. So that's it for the time being. I've got to work out, I don't, I, I, I don't know if I even need to paint these uh, because obviously everything slips on over the top of them. I probably will, but you know, every layer of whatever means they don't fit so well. But uh, I probably need to paint that end and I need to work out how I'm gonna get the indicator wires through there and make that look nice probably a grommet we like grommets and we like cheese um yeah so same there but yeah clip-ons risers were the perfect solution i don't know if i had that in mind in the first place if only i could remember what my brain came up with three weeks ago there's a lot of shit that goes on in here it's difficult to keep track of it all. There we go, lowered lights as well. So another gaping void in here, which we need to work out what we're gonna do. Fill it up, but yeah, it's coming on. It still looks high at the front, right? <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. It's difficult to tell at this point in time with no tank and everything for reference. But uh, it kind of looks like a bloody chopper to me. Um, 
what I'm thinking, either I just go for non-risers and put them down here, or I take those and I flip them so that they're actually lowerers rather than riserers. Um, and that might work. It means I've got to take the yoke off again. That'll be third time. Third time lucky, eh? Um, but that's what I'm thinking. Literally flip them over, swap them around. I don't know if that'll work. I'll have to work it out. Just doesn't look right though, right? We've gone from bobber to chopper. That's no good, is it? Well, I guess I've got it right, at least in terms of uh, the angle. We are talking level. And with all that hanging in the balance, I shall uh, leave you dangling. Uh, thanks again for watching. And if you haven't already, please subscribe and encourage others to watch my lunacy.